The 7900 GRE was released in 2023, but only in China. It made its way over to US retailers in February of 2024. So we're coming in at the time of recording this video on six months since its release. So is it actually worth it for you, the consumer? Now this is coming from somebody who spends their own money on the graphics cards that they test on this channel. So we're gonna test this graphics card at 1440p and we're gonna be using a middle of the road processor because a lot of you are in a situation where you have a pretty solid CPU and you're wanting to make the jump, but you're not sure if you should. So we're using the i5-12600K. It's a little bit better than the Ryzen 5 5600. Probably not quite as good as like the 7500F or 7600 from the AM5 socket. So that will be a deciding factor in some of the FPS numbers that we see throughout this benchmark video. Now it doesn't bottleneck the graphics card at 1440p in every benchmark, but I will make sure to point those out in the games where the CPU affected the FPS a little bit. Again, we're looking for a realistic expectation based off someone looking to upgrade their system or purchase this graphics card. So let's see how these 16 gigabytes of VRAM fare in games here in 2024. In Call of Duty Warzone, we played the resurgence game mode on ultra settings with no upscaling to start with. We got a really solid 165 to 170 FPS, super smooth, no stutters, 1% lows were good as you can see on the screen here, loved every minute of it. But you know we gotta try FSR 3.0 because it's available to us and even though it's Call of Duty and a lot of people are like, you shouldn't use upscaling on pew pew games, but you know, I, I, I'm a boomer and that kind of stuff doesn't bother me. So we tried it and we got like 200 FPS, which I think is pretty cool. And AMD frame generation, it's supposed to like crank the S numbers way up when it comes to your FPS numbers, like super high. But that's where your CPU starts to affect the S a lot. And our i5-12600K just cannot output the frames that are possible with the 7900 GRE, or at least that was my experience because we tested an RX 7700 XT and it got like 270. So we know the 7900 G is better, so therefore it's gotta be the CPU that's the problem. So we moved on to Cyberpunk 2077 just to you know try out the ray tracing features. We tried it once with no ray tracing, max settings, no upscaling, and we got 101.82 FPS, really, really solid. To put that in a little bit more context, we did get 111 FPS with the 4070 Super on another test that we've done, which, you know, stay tuned because that video is coming or it's already out and we'll compare these two head to head. But ray tracing is like the huge deciding factor. So, but ray tracing is a big deal to some people. So we did try that max overdrive ray tracing settings. We did use, we use the default settings though, but ray tracing is a big deal to some people. So we use the max ray tracing settings. It's the overdrive settings, but that by default turns on FSR. So we just left that because it's just a good baseline. As long as you're using the same settings for both tests, when you test graphics cards, when you compare them later, this just makes my life easier because I'm a one man show here. If you want to see all the detailed breakdown numbers, you're going to have to go watch the big dogs because, you know, I'm just I'm just a peon. But that being said, we got 33.8 FPS ray tracing with FSR. But the 4070 Super, you know, would crush that. It got like 80 something. But again, that video is coming. If you're liking this graphics card and you think you might want to buy it, then check out the link whenever you make your decision down in the description because it is an affiliate link. Just, you know, go look at it. Check it out. Then we went to smash some space aliens and Helldivers 2 on ultra settings with no upscaling. It was absolutely awesome. Like 120 FPS. Crush those aliens. Yeah, they, they were, they had no chance. Then we tried Starfield and we went to New Atlantis because, you know, New Atlantis is, you know, apparently the most demanding place in the game of Starfield, according to my TikTok comment section, according to my TikTok comment section, which, you know, it's TikTok. So take that with a grain of salt. We got a whopping 72 FPS on ultra settings with no upscaling. That's super solid and playable in Starfield, in my opinion. I, I don't think there's anything wrong or disappointing with that number but you can let me know how you feel moving on to some more like competitive type titles now we didn't do like true esports like valorant and overwatch but we did try the finals now, now the finals is a game that will use your cpu a lot it's run on uef 5 unreal engine 5 and it's pretty optimized but you're not going to be cranking out those super high fps numbers so uh, 
unless you got like a really good CPU. Now I've not tested it, you know, with my 14700K or 7800X 3D. So I don't know what like the maximum situation is for the finals, but we did get 165 FPS here. We used ultra settings. We turned our upscaling stuff uh, just kind of like on the default level, you know, that we have there. And 165 FPS, it's, you do have to be careful testing this game because it will turn on ray tracing. So we did turn that off to get, you know, a little bit more performance out of it, but it doesn't make a huge, but it doesn't make a drastic difference from what I've tried in the different settings in this game. But 165 was the max that we kind of got with any of the settings on the Epic presets. Next up, we tried Ubisoft's masterpiece, which is X Defiant. X Defiant in my testing so far has run way better on AMD GPUs. We got 220 FPS on their max preset settings that they have that's really awesome it was smooth i just don't know what i'm doing in this game so i got pooped on most of the time but you can see the s numbers and the one percent lows are, are pretty solid as well then we tried a couple you know tried and true games that have been around for a while the first one being apex legends i'm not a movement demon in apex legends but you know we, we gave it a shot and at max settings, Apex Legends got 260 FPS, which is really awesome, con you know, considering everything that, you know, Apex Legends could do. So the, the GPU really helped us out here a lot. And our CPU didn't, you know, didn't do too bad itself. And of course, you, we can't have a benchmark video without trying everyone's favorite battle royale. And that's good old Fortnite. Now, Fortnite, we know is a CPU game in a lot of ways, but you need a decent graphics card. And still to this day, we have, you know, NVIDIA graphics cards are just better because that's what all the pros use. And if you're going to play in tournaments, you know, you got to use NVIDIA. Well, most of you little Timmies are not making money in Fortnite. So there's nothing wrong with AMD. And so let me show you some numbers here. Now, we did run it on a DX12 and performance mode. And in both situations, our CPU kind of stopped our FPS at around that 300 mark. Now, at times we got as much as like 350 FPS on performance mode, but the biggest deciding factor in both of these are the 1% lows, and your 1% lows are just way, way better when it comes to DX12. So if you're not, you know, performing, I, I can't tell you. I, I don't really notice that big of a difference, to be honest, when I'm playing, but your 1% lows are in the 30s and 40s on performance mode, and they're 100 when you're testing it in DX12. So that's up to you. You take that with a grain of salt. But if you want to see how an NVIDIA graphics card does in these same games, or mostly the same games, go, go watch this 